A thousand people have been killed by this bee since 1960. They're a hybrid that was meant to produce more honey, but something went wrong. Instead of producing more honey, these killer bees were deadlier and more aggressive, even killing horses at one point. So what makes a bee sting so deadly? Well, when it comes to honeybees, nothing much. Unless you're allergic to them, a sting from one bee will cause very little harm to a human. When a bee stings you, as you might have previously seen, it releases the stinger, which can dig deep inside your body. On the other end, you'll usually see part of the bee along with the venom sac and the bee's stomach. Talk about a gruesome death. Just for the sake of comparison, here's what a bee sting looks like under a microscope. The gray image you see before it is a needle tip, also viewed under an electron microscope. Clearly, you can see which of these is sharper. However, if you look a little closer, you'll see that the stinger has a serrated edge. Each bee has two stingers, and they rub back and forth so they can seep inside the victim's skin, something like this. Once the bee stinger is in, it works like a screw. The bee cannot take it out. The reason for that is simple. Bees have evolved to use the stinger as a defense against predators. Since humans and large animals are rarely bee predators, the stinger doesn't work on them. It works wonderfully on smaller insects. For example, a bee can sting an ant several times and it won't lose its stinger. However, once that pointed serrated tip seeps into the skin of an animal or a human skin, the tissue and fibers surrounding it make it impossible to take the stinger out. Oh, but the bee won't give up that easily. As we've said, they think that an animal is just like an insect, and they'll try to pull the stinger out. After several tries, the bee's abdomen will burst as the muscles aren't tough enough to pull this little needle out. The venom sac along with the bee's abdomen and the whole stinging mechanism comes out and the bee dies. Now, after the bee stings you, it'll smash that like button just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, the bee will release some venom inside your body. This is why it's important to remove the bee sting as soon as you've been stung. Otherwise, if the stinger stays in the skin, more of the apotoxin will be injected into your body and the inflammation will worsen. There's a reason for that. Apotoxin is comprised of 52% melitin and is the stuff people are allergic to. The rest of the 48% comprises 5% adalapin and some other peptides, which are water soluble. The human body 70% water, so it's very easy for the poison to spread throughout your body. But for the sake of argument, let's suppose that a bee stings you and leaves the bee sting in your skin for a couple of minutes before removing it. Here's what you'll get after two minutes. About five minutes in and the stinger removed, you'll start to see some swelling around the puncture wound. Then in about 30 minutes, the bite area will start to swell. It's going to feel like it's about to burst and it'll be very itchy. Still, you should refrain from scratching the affected area. After about 24 hours, the swelling should have subsided but you'll still see a little redness around the puncture wound. So as you can see, a sting from a single bee is generally harmless. Stings from five bees at the same time are generally harmless too. However, many people try to steal the bee's honey. Now, this is where things can go horribly wrong. Bees are usually kind and gentle, especially honeybees. They rarely attack anyone unless provoked. Stepping on them, agitating them, or hitting them will trigger them to react. And it wouldn't be too bad to get stung by a bee if the other bees weren't there to attack and protect. Imagine if a swarm of hundreds of bees were after you. Now what would you do? Because once that first bee stings, the stinger leaves a trail. Bee venom is a pheromone that other bees can pick up. This alerts them that the beehive is in danger and the whole colony needs to protect it. They'll then open their mandibles, push their stingers out of their backside, and go into a stinging rage. At this point, they'll sting anything and everything that moves, and this includes you. And since a bee can reach a speed anywhere between 10 and 15 miles an hour, your best bet is to start running. Most humans can outrun a colony of bees. Don't look back, just run. Sometimes they might chase you for a mile, but that's the price you'll have to pay for making them angry. Oh, and a side note, don't think you can hide from them underwater. Unless you have a way to stay underwater for more than 60 seconds, the bees will be able to sense the pheromones and they'll wait for you to get out of the water so they can start stinging again. Hundreds of bites suddenly become very painful, producing so many toxins that your body gets overwhelmed trying to defend against the venom. 
Speaking of antibodies, let's talk about what happens inside your body once a bee stings you. After the venom enters the bloodstream, it spreads throughout the bloodstream very rapidly. However, the antibodies in your bloodstream will start fighting back. They're the body's first line of defense. While the white blood cells are fighting a battle inside, on the outside you'll experience redness, swelling, itchiness, and some heat. Here's a thermal image of a foot that was stung by a bee on the left compared to a foot that wasn't stung by a bee. And this is about 30 hours after the bee sting. Still, you can clearly see that the left foot is around 7 degrees warmer than the image on the right. Once the venom is inside your body, the melaton that we talked about earlier will start destroying red blood cells, while the white blood cells will start destroying it. After that, your body will release histamine. That chemical will help dilate the blood vessels to make them whiter and leakier. In turn, this will cause swelling on the outside. After this, a couple of things could happen. First of all, your blood pressure could drop, your kidneys will start working overtime to purify the body of toxins, and your heart and adrenal glands will be stimulated. This could be very dangerous for those who are allergic to bee stings. When the body gets sensitized to the bee venom, because the victim was bitten in the past, now this person is oversensitized to the venom and starts producing lots of antibodies to fight it. In severe cases, the victim could go into anaphylactic shock, which starts with the swelling of the throat and the blocking of the airways. Because this can be very dangerous for the victim, those allergic to bee stings are told to carry bee sting kits so the situation doesn't escalate. There's a scale called the Schmidt Sting Pain Index that was invented by Justin O. Schmidt, an entomologist from Arizona. To make the scale, he had to voluntarily be stung by hundreds of insects. After that, he compiled the findings and created a scale to help people determine the pain threshold of an insect stinger bite. On the Schmidt scale, zero is the lowest and four is the highest. Four is reserved for the excruciatingly painful bite of the bullet ant. The bee sting scores a two on this scale. Speaking of bee stings, not all of them can sting. Only female workers and the queen bee can sting. The males don't have a stinger. Their only job is to mate with the queen and produce offspring. The females use the sting as a tool for laying their eggs. They also need the stinger because the female bees are the ones that attack when in danger. Also, unlike any other bee, the queen can sting a human as many times as she wants and not lose the stinger. However, the stinger isn't the only tool bees use to protect the hive. They can also use heat to kill their predators. For example, let's assume that a giant hornet attacked and started killing the colony's worker bees. The bees can't overpower the hornet, but they can form a ball around it, generate heat by rubbing their bodies, and then cook the hornet alive. It seems a little cruel and harsh, but if left alone, this Japanese hornet could kill an entire colony of bees. YouTube thinks you should watch this video next.